Okay, in lesson 9, we were adding fractions and mixed numbers in some cases. And we were using a couple different strategies. We were using the smiley face, which is just a shortcut, just so we can set up the algebraic expression to solve it. And we we're also using least common multiples or least common denominators. Okay, now the first method we're going to show is what's called the smiley face. And we'll just do this as a way to um, keep track on how we're setting up our algebraic expression to solve the problem. Now, what we're basically we're doing, we're making two equivalent fractions. And we're making two equivalent fractions that we're going to add together. And the first thing we do, when, especially when you're making the models, when you're making your models, what you're doing is you're multiplying these two numbers together, these two denominators together, to get a common denominator. Now, the next thing you were doing, you were taking the numerator times the denominator in order to find that equivalent fraction. And on the other side, we were taking 1 times 5. Now, if you have done this correctly, this is why it's called the smiley face method, because if you've done it correctly, you should have a smiley face when you're done. Now, to simplify this, we can see we have 3 times 11, which would be 33, 5 times 11, which would be 55, 1 times 5, which would be 5, 11, uh, 5 times 11 would be 55. And we're going to end up with 38 fifths. Now, one of the ways that we showed was this is a good answer. Okay, it's a good answer. But it, some t cases they could ask you to simplify. And the way we've been simplifying in class is we asked three, four different questions, basically. Can it be divisible by two? And in order to be divisible by two, they both have to be even numbers. And 55 is not an even number, so it is not divisible by two. Next, is it divisible by three? Well, the quick method we, we determined on how to find out if it was divisible by three was to add the digits. So in the top one, we have 3 plus 8 is 11. And 11 is not a multiple of 3, so that 38 is not a multiple of 3. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 is not a multiple of 3, so the whole number cannot be a multiple of 3. So 3 is no good. Next one is 5. In order to be a multiple of 5, it would have to end in 0 or 5. And 38 is not a multiple of 5, so it cannot be divisible by 5. Now, the last one you just really have to worry about, there's no real trick to it, is sevens. You have to know your sevens. So, I know 7 times 5 is 35, so that cannot be divisible by 7. If you cannot divide, if, if, if both numbers are not a multiple of any of these three, then it is in simplest form. Okay, the next one we have here. Let's do the same thing. Let's set it up. This time, I'm going to put just one line here because we know on both fractions we have the common denominator, which is 9 times 6. On top here, we're doing 2 times 6, putting our operator in, and then we have 5 times 9. So that's going to give us 12 plus 45 over 54ths, which is going to give us 57 54ths. Now, this is a good answer. Now, 57 54ths is known as a fraction that's greater than 1. And we know if we wanted to simplify that and turn it into a mixed number, we would pull a whole out of it, a 54 54ths. And then we would have to add another 3 54ths to it to equal 57 54ths. So that's going to be equal to 1 and 3 54ths. Now, this here is also a good answer. Now, there's another answer because I can simplify these. And I know I can simplify these because I know that they are both divisible by 3. 3 is divisible by 3 and 54 is divisible by 3. And I know that because 5 plus 4 is 9 and 9 is divisible by 53. So I know I can do 1 times 3 and then I can do 18 times 3 would equal 54. 
take out my common, and I can see this would also equal 1 and 1 18th. So there's three good answers there. Okay, on D, now you don't have to do all three of these fractions at the same time. Okay, so let's start, and I'm going to use fractions that are easy to add together first, because I can rewrite this any way I want. So I got one quarter plus two fifths plus one tenth. And one of the things I showed you in class is, instead of just doing the smiley method all the time, how about looking for common factors? And the first thing that, uh, common multiples, and the first thing you ask is, can I turn one fraction to the other? And two fifths is very easy to turn into one tenth in the tenths. Because if I have two-fifths times something equals ten, I know I have to multiply five by two, that means I have to multiply two by two, and that'd be four. So now I got one-fourth plus four-tenths plus one-tenth, which now gives us one-fourth plus five-tenths. Now we can go ahead and do our smiley face method if we'd like. And what we're going to set up is 4 times 10 here. And we have the 1 times 10 plus the 5 times 4, which gives us 10 plus 20 over 40, which equals 30 fortieths. Now, 30 fortieths is actually equal to 3 times 10 over 4 times 10. And since we're multiplying and dividing by 10s, we take them out, and our answer is 3 fourths. Okay, so now if I start the smiley face method with this fraction, first thing I would do so I'm going to, I would multiply 8 times 12, which is going to give me 96, and that's a pretty large denominator. So instead, and I know I can't turn one into the other, so I'm going to have to skip count. And I know 12, 24, now 8, 16, 24. And I can see I have a common multiple of 24. So at this point, I like writing them like this because I want to multiply by something to equal 24. And I know 8 times 3 is 24, so I have to have a 3 on top because we want to multiply by 1 to get an equivalent fraction. Okay? So 3 times 5 would have been 15. Over here, I got to multiply by 2 to get 24, so I'll multiply 2 on top and I got 14. So now we actually have 15 24 plus 14 24, which equals 29 24. And this is a good answer. But if we wanted to turn this into a mixed number, we would take 24 24 plus, and we'd have to add 5 more to it, 24, which would equal 1 and 5 24. Now, this is another good answer. Now, if we wanted to look and see. Ms. Womack, please contact the front office. Ms. Womack, please contact the front office. If we wanted to see if this was in the simplest form, we'd say, are they both multiple divisible by 2? No, they're not, because 5 is not divisible by 2. Are they divisible by 3? No, 5 is not divisible by 3. Are they divisible by 5? 5 is, but not 24. And they're not divisible by 7. So the simplest form is 1 and 5 24. Okay, so this is actually equal to 1 plus 1 third plus 3 fourths if we break it down. And instead of create an equivalent fraction, well, a fraction greater than 1 with 1 and 1 third, why don't we just add these two fractions and add that to our one whole. So we have 1 third plus 3 fourths. And when we do our smiley face, we got 3 times 4. And on top, I got 1 times 4 plus 3 times 3. which gives us 4 plus 9 over 12, which gives us 13 twelfths. 13 twelfths equals 12 twelfths plus 1 twelfth. So we know that equals 1 and 1 twelfth. So this was 1 and 1 twelfth, 
we still have to add our hole in there. So that would equal 2 and 1 twelfth. The next one we have 5 sixth plus 1 fourth plus 1. All I did was break them apart. And I'm going to go ahead and add these two first. Now, I know they're even. So I'm looking for a least common multiple. 4, 8, 12, 6, 12. So I'm going to turn these two fractions into twelfths. And I know 2 times 6 is 12, so 2 times 5 is going to give us 10. I know 4 times 3 is 12, so 1 times 3 gives us 3. So now I know that this is actually 10 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, which is going to equal 13 twelfths. So we actually have 1 and 13 twelfths. So 1 and 13 twelfths, we know that can be 12 twelfths plus 1 twelfth would equal 2 and 1 twelfth. Okay, so here it says on Monday, Cobb practiced guitar for two-thirds an hour. When she finished, she practiced piano for three-quarter of an hour. How much time did she spend practicing both instruments? Okay. So let's start with a tape diagram. We know the top is always total time, or total of whatever we're trying to solve. And it says she practiced for two-thirds of an hour and three-fourths of an hour. And we're looking for the total time. So we know two-thirds plus three-fourths will give us our total time. So in order to create it, we're going to start with three times four. And we're taking two times four plus, because we put an operator, three times three. Which when we simplify that, it's going to be eight plus, not multiply, nine over 12, which gives us 17 twelfths. Now 17 twelfths is equal to 12 twelfths plus five twelfths, which equals one and five twelfths. So she practiced one and five twelfths hours. Okay, so let's start with a tape diagram. And it starts off by saying that Joe spends two fifths of his money on a jacket. He spends another three eighths of his money on a shirt. And want to know how much did he spend, what fractional part did he spend on a pair of pants. Now the total on top is not a monetary amount of money, it just means all of his money, which means one, all of his money. So we can see by the tape diagram, it's one, all of his money, minus how much he spent on the jacket, plus how much he spent on the shirt. And that should give us how much of his money he spent on pants. So we're going to start off by adding two fifths plus three-eighths, and that means this is going to be eight times five, and we got two times eight plus three times five, which that gives us 16 plus 15 over 40, which equals 31 fortieths. Now, so this up here now is equal to 31 Fortieths, and we still got to subtract that from one. When you subtract that from one, we know that it's going to take nine fortieths left in order to equal the whole. So the pants, you spend.